All right, I showed you how to create this King of the Hill asset, and now I'm gonna show you how to attach a score to the zone so that when your player enters the zone, it will start adding score to the player score. So let's get started. So select the King of the Hill and let's add a collider. Type collider in the search and capsule collider is what we're looking for. All right, I'm gonna hit five on the radius because that's what I know is the radius of my crown circle. Yours could be a little bit different, but you can just adjust the radius to whatever you need. All right, before we get too far, we're gonna need to hold, to create a position for our score to be held into. So uh, right click in the hierarchy, hit UI and text. Let's then double click on the text in the hierarchy and we can, takes us to that in our scene view and we can drag it all the way up into our canvas window in the top left. We can then make it bigger. You might notice the words disappear if you make it too big. You just need to create the text field bigger. So let's put 300 here and 100 in the height and our text should come back. There we go. You can also change the color to red. Let's rename this to score. And then let's add a script in our scripts folder that we're going to add to this game object, to this text object, so that we can actually edit it in our script and in our game. So create C sharp script. Let's rename this to score manager and open it up in Visual Studio or Mono Develop, whichever one you're using. Okay, let's delete everything out of or inside these brackets. Okay, the first thing we're going to declare is the score variable, but we want it to be a static variable because we want to be able to use it in our other scripts and we want the variable to stay the same throughout our script. So that's why we want to declare it as a static and then name it. So public static int score. So score is the name of the variable. We're good to go to the next line. And this one, we actually want to declare a text variable. And so we're going to need our Unity UI directory, so we need to type using unity engine.ui and this will make it so we can reference a text component on the inspector. So um, text, capital T, then we can name our variable text1 so we don't get confused with the other texts that we're going to be writing in the code. All right, we're now going to want to call this, reference this code. We're now gonna to wanna to reference this next line of code on awake. So what function do we need to type in to make this next line of code happen when the game is awake? Easy, it's void awake. Make sure it's capital A, parentheses, then brackets. And in the brackets, we are going to type text1 equals get component, carrots, parentheses, semicolon. And in the parentheses, we're going to write text1 equals get component, carrots, parentheses, and then a semicolon. And now it's asking for what component we want to get. So what, what do we want to set our text variable to? We want to set it to the text component in our inspector. So type text, capital T, and that's how you would do that. Okay, then let's change our score variable to zero. We'll set it equal to zero, so at the very beginning of our game, the score will automatically be zero. Okay, the next function we want to call, we want to do it every frame. We want to do this next line of code every frame. So what function are we going to call this time? Void update. Parentheses, brackets. Okay, this void update is where we're going to change the text 
component or the, our text variable, which is also our text component because we had set it equal to each other, we're going to want to set that to our score. So type text.text .text, or text1.text .text because that's the name of our variable. And then this is the string that we want to add into our variable equal to quotes and add the score. Sweet. And whatever we type in these quotes is going to be in front of our score number. So we can just type score like that and it will look okay. Or we can type player one or player two and have that work as well. Okay, let's hit save. This is all the code we need for us to access the component in the inspector. So when we attach this code to the inspector, the text... So when we attach this code to the text um, game object in our hierarchy, we're going to be able to, when we hit, when we did, say get component text, it's going to be grabbing this text component and setting it equal to our text variable that we declared right here. And so when we throw in score plus score into here, it should change it in our scene view. So if we hit play, yep, it changes the text in our text field right here to score equals zero. Now we not need to write the code that's going to be on our capsule, on our capsule collider, on our king of the hill circle. So let's go and create a C sharp script and rename this score zone. So this is going to register if our player is in the zone and then it's going to add the score while it's in the zone. So let's open this up. Let's delete everything out of the brackets. And then we're going to call a function. So if you've been watching our previous videos, you should be able to guess what this function is going to be. It's dealing with a collider. We need to register if it's entering or exiting this collider or if it's staying. So what's the function we're going to write? OK, let's go with a void on trigger stay. And you want to make sure that it's spelled exactly how I spell it because this is the unity function that they have already declared like already made and if you um, have a normal t it won't throw an error because it's going to think that this is your own function so make sure it's spelled correctly not on trigger void but on trigger stay then parentheses and brackets and in the parentheses we are going to want to register the other collider. So collider, whoop, capital C, collider, dot, dot, or not, not dot, just space, other. And so when there's an, if there's a, an other collider inside this collider, this is when this code's going to run. So we want to add the score to our score variable, and how we access that static variable is we actually call the code, the script name. So we write score manager dot, and then we call the variable that's in that script, which is just score, and then we add one to it. So plus equals one. And that's all you need to register that your game object is in the king of the hill circle and will add score to our score variable. Let's go back to Unity and make sure that this script is attached to our king of the hill collider. Let's drag the score zone in. There, it's attached. And this should work great. We also need to make sure to hit is trigger on this capsule collider because then it will act like it's not supposed to allow game objects in.
Okay, it's working great. As you can see, our score continues to tally when the game object is in the zone. If we pulled it up, oh, we had pulled the entire zone up and it looks like it left the player out, but we keep, we can put it back in and the score continues to tally. So that's pretty awesome. We can also do that with a sphere and play around with the sphere. So we drag it up, it's out, enters, and the score tallies. And we can practice any which way. We can do it even quickly and see if how fast it registers. But cool, that's all you need to do for a score. I hope you guys were able to learn some stuff and I hope you can add this to your own game. So I've already thrown in a bunch of this code to my own game and, and manipulated it to what I needed. But that game's going to be released soon and you'll be able to play it and see exactly what you guys can do with a King of the Hill circle or a point zone. So thanks for watching. Please subscribe and we'll catch you in the next video.